Welcome back to the Mastering AI series. I'm your host, Maribel Lopez, the Founder and Principal Analyst at Lopez Research. 5G networks are a crucial part of a CSP's growth strategy, and CSPs have never been under more pressure to deliver high-quality services. Global network traffic has increased over threefold in the past five years, and IP traffic is expected to exceed 300 exabytes per month. As traffic grows, it's becoming increasingly difficult for CSPs to collect, analyze, and generate intelligence around this data, yet it's never been more important to do so. At the same time, the cost and complexity of managing the network has increased while the price a CSP can charge per gigabit has fallen. Existing rigid network policies can't meet the dynamic nature of today's network demands. Applying AI to network management will allow CSPs to analyze large volumes of data to accomplish tasks more efficiently and more effectively. Let's talk about how this happens. This Mastering AI for CSP series, covering how to best leverage and scale AI to drive CX and network improvements, get the right data foundation and practical do's and don'ts, is brought to you by Amdocs. Today, I'll be joined by a guest, David Hovey from OpenNet. He is the Executive Director for 5G Core Products. We're going to discuss how AI can help CSPs improve their network operations, reduce network expenses, all whilst putting the customer first. Welcome to the program, David. Thank you, Mary Bell. Nice to, nice to talk with you again. It's clear that CSPs are under tremendous pressure to increase capacity, improve performance, and deliver new network-based services. They need instant visibility into what's happening in the network. But beyond visibility, CSPs also need systems that are learning, assistive, and predictive. The first step to delivering better services requires applying AI to network operations and performance management. Let's start by discussing the changes that can make this happen. David, we've always had network management and network optimization tools. What does AI give us today that we didn't have before? Yeah, so it's a good question, Maribel. Um, look, I, I think I'd, I'd like to start by setting the setting the, the the kind of business outcome that we're trying to achieve, and effectively we're trying to, you know, just like your introduction, in a sense, achieve more with what we already have um, and, and and while achieving more uh, actually make more money as well so it's, it's 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 a kind of duality that if you if you're able to sweat your assets and and leverage and over leverage them then that's great because it it affects your bottom line but really driving the top line at the same time is is of massive interest and and I think you know if if, if you look beforehand then then CSPs really in terms of building their network they had to predict peak load um, they had to kind of invent their own rules and regulations and, and everything was hard coded. Um, and I think really the, the introduction of AI allows this kind of smart prediction of, of effectively network function load. As we move into 5G, we've, we've moved to the terminology of network functions, uh, no more boxes anymore, they've all gone. Um, and, and really trying to drive that, that, that understanding and prediction on a macro level, so it's a network wide um, or, or a segment within the network, a slice for example, um, and even user-specific uh, real-life performance. So, so there's nothing hard-coded anymore. It's, it's a very, very volatile environment. And, and really, the, the introduction of this AI can effectively predict and mitigate potential issues, um, th things that are not visible to the human eye, if you like, uh, for, from an operator perspective. And really, this is all about putting the customer experience first. And, and there'll be nothing worse than launching your, your shiny new 5G network and actually failing customer expectations. So this kind of diversity of the things you can do with 5G, uh, a lot of the press nowadays about 5G standalone is about all the new features and functions which become available uh, through the lens of, of driving these, these capabilities. We need to have an understanding and a predictive understanding of actually what's going on in the network to, to give that visibility of service performance and, and leveraging the network assets which are actually delivering that. So within the 5G specifications, the 3GPP organization has defined a network function. So one of the network functions known as NWDAF, which is Net Network Data Analytics Function. And, and really, you know, it's, it's about driving the ability to understand what we call these new 5G currencies. And I think this is a good language to, to, to talk about this. Things like latent, latency, jitter, 
error rates, for example. And NWDAF is really a component which is able to have uh, the ability to refine the information coming out of the network and distill that into an understanding, leveraging AI, which effectively allows you to, to drive capabilities such as closed loop aut automation, for example, which is kind of resolving issues even before they happen, which is a fantastic thing in any walk of life. Um, and for example, you know, people who are paying for greater availability or, or, or that you're promising something to, you can actually provide that visibility both for yourself and to your customers, uh, allowing some, some level of assurance. And, and then we'll, we'll talk about this later, perhaps, but, you know, things like dynamic pricing, you know, that now we don't just have a static resource, we don't have static demand. Could we leverage this level of knowledge to start to drive uh, a, a kind of dynamic behavior in, in, in the commercial sense as well? And really, okay, so, so to wrap up on the question, I think, you know, it's really about saying that we shift the data that we always had and we drive that now into an operational model where we leverage AI, we leverage the standardization of NWDAF and, and really put the customer first and drive the network assets to, 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 to excel and exceed customer expectations. This makes sense, but David, it strikes me that there are many vendors that are designing intelligent solutions. What should CSPs be looking for? I mean, for example, shouldn't the NEP simply provide this? Yeah, that's a good follow-up question, um, Mary Bell. So, look, I think you know, carrying on from my previous discussion, you know, the, the, every time we change generation, you know, and we've we've done it five times now. <laughs> we're on we're on the fifth uh, fifth generation, and uh, and even within the fifth generation, let's let's not forget that there are a couple of versions of that, right? So the NSA non-standalone, which is effectively four G with a bit of five G radio, nothing new there in in many senses. 5G standalone does bring a lot of novelty, right? And, and the novelty is about providing levers and capabilities within the network, which stretch way beyond just simple quality of service, for example. There are many, many parameters which can be uh, uh, modified even on the fly and exposed to the outside world and, uh, and, and effectively can become feeders of information themselves into the NWDAF environment, for example. So, so driving the information sources, driving the data points, and and therefore the points of influence across the, net, uh, the network and what we find that that doesn't just sit in in one particular domain so you know you mentioned should it be sourced from the neps now if we look at the typical mobile environment even before 5g it's a multi-vendor environment and and this is done for many uh, commercial and, and technical reasons and even political reasons uh, we see happening sometimes and and i think in reality that kind of mishmash of, of vendors is only going to accelerate with 5G with the disaggregation of many components, even the radio um, and even the transport networks. Is, there's no longer one big single vendor which would provide all of that. So, so actually, when you look from an end-to-end -end perspective and, uh, and try to understand where your information sources are coming from, whether they're 3GPP um, information sources or non-3GPP, such as transport, for example, computing, cloud elements, all these are valid feeders into something which is going to drive an AI model and a machine learning model on that informational source and, and actually have a ven vendor agnostic, system agnostic approach. So, so I think, you know, a NEP would necessarily be good at their own domain, but that's not what 5G is about. And 5G truly is about a, a multi-domain, multi-vendor uh, um, uh, uh, service-based effectively architecture, which can morph and change and will morph and change as we go through release 16, release, release 17, when many more aspects come. For example, what happens when we plug in multi-access edge computing one day? That's not natively part of 5G, but it's certainly an optional value add that you could plug into your network and distribute thousands of these mech devices around the place. Well, suddenly, again, you have another informational feed, which you never had before, and is a little bit orthogonal to the standard 3GPP stuff. And I think that, again, is where our view is that the approach behind this model no longer fits to a traditional NEP approach, which is driving a kind of one-stop shop radio 3GPP uh, uh, only uh, access, access network. And I think that's really where the ability to focus on driving down costs and driving up business uh, is, is really the interesting uh, uh, place to look from. And I, I just want to repeat that model from before. And, you know, if, if, if you look again at driving new ideas onto the network and saying, 
what can I do with dynamic pricing? I'll, I'll give you an example. Actually, despite my accent, uh, I don't live in England, I live in France. Uh, and our electrical grid has dynamic pricing. So you can actually, there are even a few different models to enter into that, but you can manage things such that your power hungry devices only turn on when the power is the cheapest. So the advantage to you is, is that you get cheaper pricing for, for you know, heating water or, or whatever you're doing. And the advantage for the grid is that it flattens the peak load. And of course there, if you think about it, then driving information in, into models like that is not necessarily always in the interest of the net vendors either, because clearly, you know, there's still most of the capex in, in, in any mobile operator is still the radio. So I, th I think there are lots of good examples why we need to put the business advantages first and then look at the vendors later. David, I'd like to wrap up with a final question. For those CSPs listening today, what do they need to do to get started on the path of implementing this? Yeah, so, you know, I, I think all these things are a journey. Um, first of all, let, let's, let's, be, let's be clear on this. You know, at the end of, sorry, mid-2021, it feels like the end already somehow, um, you know, the, even the, the 5G standalone networks are few and far between. Um, so the very fact of not having a network is seems a little bit prescient on you know that why would we have an ND, NWDAF if we don't have a network yet? So, so so clearly there's some sequencing there. I do think the early introduction of the NWDAF is of fantastic importance, not just because you'll get great benefits straight away. I'm not sure the benefits will be immediate and massive, but I do think the kind of culture change and the operational model and the understanding commercially of what what becomes possible through the action of having this information and these machine learning models in place, that there are not many skills on the market uh, which are necessarily machine learning strong. Um, and, and I think uh, therefore, you know, the kind of learning on the job aspect would be, would be very interesting. I think also as we start to connect NWDAF into orchestration, it's very clear that orchestration will become a key component of making 5G standalone a success. Uh, that the whole point of slices and and the ability to to modify attributes across the network, reallocate spectrum, do all sorts of really interesting things in the network, has to be driven by machines, and and those machines are called orchestrators and orchestrators of orchestrators. I think you know mm -hmm. having an early connection between NWDAF and and this rapidly evolving world to to instead of having a fixed network, have a predictive and self learning network, I think will be a great benefit as the takeoff an adoption of 5G standalone effectively hits its, uh, its, its hockey stick curve. I don't think it's worth waiting until then. In many senses, I think uh, there'll be too much learning and too much flux already happening to introduce at that stage. So, so I think, you know, pragmatically, really understanding how the quality of experience can be driven through this model, even at an early stage, is of great benefit on a, from both a human perspective and from a strategic perspective. Thank you, David, for your descriptions on how AI can help CSPs more effectively manage the network and unlock new opportunities. And thank you to the audience as well. And we look forward to sharing more information with you in our next Mastering AI session. This Mastering AI for CSP series, covering how to best leverage and scale AI to drive CX and network improvements, get the right data foundation and practical do's and don'ts is brought to you by Amdocs.